In this lesson, we're going to work with Photoshop Classroom and a Book Chapter 4, which is all about layers. When working with layers in Photoshop, think of them as transparent pieces of glass stacked up on top of each other. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to organize your elements, and you can apply certain effects to certain layers. Let's go ahead, go to Canvas. We're on Photoshop Classroom Book Chapter 4. Go ahead and download those assets for me to your desktop or your flash drive. Right click and extract all and open it on up. Once you've got it open, you're going to notice that there are quite a few different files available in this folder. Uh, of course it gives you the end one as usual so you can see what the final one is going to look like. You've got start and you've got a few others as well. Let's go ahead and hit start. And if you see start, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got available. Before we get started, let's do file, save as, 04, and working. So we know that's the one that we're working on right now. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the right hand side. Uh, if you can't see it, you can do window, workspace, reset your essentials. And you want to make sure you can see this layers palette right here. We will work with layers in Photoshop all the time. Layers give us the ability to see and organize things in a lot of different ways in Photoshop. The one that's on top is considered the topmost layer, so it's the one that's closest to you. Uh, background is the farthest away, so if you were to stack them up, postage would be in front and background would be in the very back. You can use your eyeballs and see different layers. So sometimes you want to be able to see certain things or turn certain things off depending on where you're at. You've got this one down here which is a lock, which means this layer is locked and it is protected. You can lock other layers if you want to. Generally, if a layer is locked it makes it a lot harder to work with, so I will double click it and unlock it or I'll drag it down to the trash and make our life a little bit simpler. All right, so one of the first things we want to do is add a picture of a beach. But clearly I don't have one called beach here. So beach is a different document that I need to add. So let's go file and open. And I have one called beach. And I'm going to say open. And I've got this cute little beach that's going to be here. I want to be able to use this file over on my pineapple over here. So I'm going to go window, arrange, and two up vertical. So I can see those side by side, which makes life a lot easier. So what we're going to do is drag this layer over here. So I know that I'm on this window because this has white, not light grayed out text. I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to go to my layers where I can see I've got this beach here. I'm going to grab and hold and drag it over to my pineapple layer. You'll notice that it got like a light gray frame around it. So I know that that's a frame I'm working on. But you'll notice that I can't see it, or you kind of can. You kind of can because the layer stacking order, you drug the beach behind the pineapple. Now we don't need this beach anymore, so we're going to go ahead and close this one down and take a look at what we've got here. So now let's go ahead and turn the eyeball off on the pineapple. So now we can just see the beach. So we can see those individual layers. One of the next things we want to do is add a border to this beach layer. So let's go ahead and double click on it. And you can actually rename it beach. So you can want to be an organized designer. It makes your life a lot easier when you know which color is where or what elements are on what layer. All right, so let's go ahead and add a stroke. A stroke is also a frame. So I'm going to be on my beach layer to make sure that it is selected. I'm going to go up to layer. I can go to layer style. And I want to go ahead and add a stroke, which is right down there. And I'm going to get a pop-up menu that says, OK, what do you want to do? These are all the different elements, things you can do. So I'm going to make it a five point stroke. I'm going to tell it on the inside. You can do inside, you can do outside, you can do center. Um, just kind of depends on where you want to play it. Put it, play with it. Our blend mode, we want it to be normal and we do not want it to be opaque at all. So let's go ahead and do white and our color. 
we can either choose a color from here, we can use our color picker, and we can grab a color from inside our image. So I've got kind of a pretty blue going on here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose part of the blue because I think that's kind of fun. And I'm going to say OK. Or you could do white if you liked white. Totally up to you. Remember that this is going to end up being your advertisement for your magazine. So you do want to do a relatively good job on it. Let's go ahead and do that. Scroll in. I'm going to grab that purple. I'm going to grab my space bar, my hand. I'm going to grab that purple down here on the flowers. I kind of like that. All right, when I've got that, I'm going to say OK. And that's all I want to do to the strokes. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to control minus out of there. So now we want to play with what's called the stacking order. Remember I said this one's the top, this one is the bottom. So we need to go ahead and change the stacking order so when we turn our pineapple back on, we're not hiding our beach. So what we're going to do is click and hold our beach and drag it up one. See how we get those double lines and let go? And now I've changed my stacking order. I've put the pineapple behind the beach. So let's go ahead and turn all of our layers on so we can kind of see everything that's going on in this image, which is quite a bit, and that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and change the opacity of a layer. Opacity is how dark something is, how much light is coming through. So we want to go ahead and change this watermark so it's not as dark. We want to make it just kind of a shadow. So I'm going to go ahead, go to my postage. I'm going to go here in my layers where it says opacity. And I get a slider. And I can slide that way down. Let's take it to about 25%. And you see how it's getting a much, 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 much lighter, much more see-through. So that's a great effect when you want to leave something in, but you don't want it to be as dark. All right, come on, go ahead and Control S and save my work. Now we're going to duplicate a layer and play with the uh, blending mode a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and let's hide postage Hawaii flower, beach. We only want to play with the pineapple. And we're going to make the pineapple, it's kind of, it's a fair pineapple, but we can make it look even better. So one of the first things we're going to do is go to our pineapple over here. We're going to right click and we want duplicate layer, which is up here at the top. It's going to say, what do you want to call it? We're going to say, go ahead and make it pineapple copy and say, okay. So now I've got two pineapples, but you really can't tell there's no difference really if I turn one off one on. It's going to change when I play with the blending mode. So over here where it says normal, I'm going to go ahead and grab the one that says overlay. And notice how I now have a much richer looking pineapple. With your blending modes you can do a lot of different types of things to your photos. You can change the effects in a lot of different ways. So definitely learn to play with those. I'm going back to overlay. And we get a, a much better, much nicer looking pineapple, more bright. All right, so I'm going to click out and play save. Control S for that. All right, so now one of the next things I need to do is play with my beach layer. So I'm going to turn my beach back on. And it's taking up quite a bit of room, and I don't really want it to take up that much room. So I'm going to select my beach layer over in layers. I'm going to go to edit and free transform. And that's going to give me the grabber boxes so that I can play and change this and scale it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit shift and grab this corner and that will scale this in proportion. If I don't, if I don't hit shift, that's how I get fun house tree. So I'm going to hit shift and drag. Undo. Shift drag. I want to release my mouse before I release the shift key. Otherwise it will do funky things to you like it just did to me a second ago. All right, I'm going to gra grab my move key. Oh, it's going to say, do you want to apply? Because we changed it. Yes, I do want to change and apply it. I want to move this up here a little bit. And I want to turn my flower on because I kind of want to tuck it under my flower a little bit. Grab it. 
and I want to rotate it just slightly. So if I go with my move tool, grab my beach, I can tr transform it, I can rotate it just a little bit. Let's make it about, oh, 15 degrees or so. And you'll notice up here at the top that we're getting that degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and put 15 in. And that's how much I want to tip it. And I'm just going to ask, do you want to apply it? Yes, I want to go ahead and apply it. It looks good. All right, so we've got our beach kind of tucked under our flower. Looks pretty good. I'm going to hit Control S and save what I've got so far. Now we're going to use some filters to create some artwork. So the white's not bad, but we can make it even better. Let's make it clouds. So we're going to go to our layers panel. We're going to go to the one called background layer. And above it, we're going to want to make a new layer. So we're going to hit the one that looks kind of like a post-it note. And we're going to double click it and we're going to name it clouds. And go ahead and click out. And now our layer has been named. So we're being organized designers. All right, we want to go here to our tools panel and we want to select our foreground and background color. So you've got your color switcher here to switch background and foreground. You can always go default to black and white. So we want to set our foreground color. And I can go ahead and I can choose a color from here. I'm making clouds, so I want probably some type of blue. I could use my color picker and go have it choose a color out of my image, which is kind of fun too. Uh, I, I'm going to go a little bit darker. And once I've got a color, I'm going to say OK. And I want my back color to be white because I want my clouds to be blue and white. If you wanted them to be blue and green, you'd need to choose a green there. All right, with this cloud layer active, we're going to go up to Filter and Render. And we want to render clouds. And notice how it automatically made a whole cloud layer for us. It's pretty realistic and looks much nicer than our plain old white. So I'm going to do Control S to save what we've got so far. We're now going to add another layer. We need to add another flower. Well, we can do that directly from Bridge. We can do it directly from File Explorer. So I'm going to go to my File Explorer and shrink it down. And I know I want this flower too. So I'm going to take Flower 2 and drag it directly onto my Photoshop document. And you'll see it placed it right here in the bottom. And because we were on our cloud layer last, it now it placed it right there. So I'm going to say yes, go ahead and place it. And I'm going to go ahead and drag it up on top of my pineapple. So it's behind the beach but on top of the pineapple. I'm going to grab my move tool so I only get the corner of the flower. And when I'm happy with it, I'm good. Now let's go ahead and play with the text on our postcard. First thing we're going to do is make the Hawaii layer visible. So I'm going to go over to my panels and turn Hawaii on. I want to make sure I don't have any layers selected. So I go to select and deselect layers in case you do have any turned on. I'm going to go ahead and grab my type tool. And we're going to actually add some letters down here at the bottom. Let's go to window and character so we can define what our character is going to look like. We can go ahead and grab a serif font. Uh, for this one they're using Birch Standard. You can use any serif font you like. But this one fits pretty well. For the font style, we're going to go ahead and use regular. You'll notice that it doesn't have any other options. We're going to go ahead and make it 36 points. We want to go ahead and make our tracking, the, letter, the space between the letters, pretty large at 250. For the color, we can choose to make it a green. We can choose another color. I want to go ahead and choose another color picker from my, from my picture. So I'm going to choose kind of a green out of, ooh, that's brown. I'm going to choose kind of a grassy green out of my beach pitcher and say OK. I want it to be full bold, which is this one right here, and all caps. So remember, you can always hold underneath and get the 
text tips, if you can't remember which one you're on, we want to go ahead and make sure it says crisp. Now we're going to go ahead and actually type our words now that we've decided all these different things about the character. I'm going to go ahead and click down here under Hawaii. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can move it. And we're going to type the word Island Paradise. Now why didn't it do all caps? Because I didn't turn it on. But I can now. So you can always go back, change your mind, and play with the character after the fact. So I'm going to click out and I'm going to grab my move tool and slide it up just a little bit more. I'm going to center it under Hawaii. And you'll notice that when we made that text layer, we now have one that says T and it says Island Paradise, so it has what we typed in. It's the very top layer because that's where we were in our stacking order. All right, let's go ahead and play a little bit more. Let's do Control S and save what we've got so far. Next thing we're going to do is play with the word Hawaii because right now it's blending in a little bit. So before that, we're going to actually create a gradient. So in order to do this, we can click on the word Hawaii on the Layers panel. If you click on the little thumbnail and right click, you get one that says Select Pixels. You have to click on the little square. So notice how it only selected just the letters. So it's a really nice easy way you didn't have to go through and magic wand and find all kinds of stuff. It made it really simple but you've got to do it by clicking on the square or the rectangle. Alright the next thing we're going to do is go to find our gradient tool over on the left hand side. It's by the paint bucket. And we have to tell it okay what colors do we want to make our gradient? What colors do we want this to be? So I'm going to hit my foreground color here and I'm going to go ahead and choose, you can choose a color here, you can use your picker. I'm going to go ahead and grab a pink or a red or an orange, totally up to you, and say OK. And I can choose white or I can choose a second color. Instead of the white, I can go ahead and choose another color. So it depends on what kind of gradient you want to have going on. My, the red and the pink are not very obvious, so I'm going to change that pink into maybe this green so that I've got a real obvious thing going on. We're going to go up here to the top and it's your gradient your gradient picker right here and it lets you see what are all your different choices that you have as far as the gradient goes. We want to go ahead and choose the one that's got this foreground background color or you can do some of the presets. From there I want to make sure that linear is chosen otherwise there's different ways of laying that out. So now how do we apply this? We actually apply by clicking and holding and dragging across and it's going to tell how to apply that color. So it's totally up to you as to how you are going to play with applying your gradient. That's fair. I don't mind it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead, Control D, deselect and control S to save what I've got so far. Notice I save all the time. It's because if something happens, your computer crashes, you lose something, you at least know it's where you were last. So Hawaii and Island Paradise are kind of melting into the background a little bit. We want them to pop a little bit more. So we're going to add what's called some layer styles. We're going to add one to this Island Paradise la layer because right now it's really blending into our pineapple. So I'm going to go over my layer and do my island paradise right here. I'm going to go up to layer, come down to layer style, and I want to add a drop shadow. And you're going to get a pick a, a panel here that's going to have a lot of different things you can play with. We want our blend mode to be multiply. We want our opacity to be 75%, so we want to make it pretty dark. Now watch what's happening as you go along and do these things. Our angles can be 78 and we're going to say to go ahead and use global light. Our distance is going to be 5 pixels so we're making it a little bit wider. The spread is 30% so look how much darker that got. And our size is going to be 10 pixels. 
So now notice how with just making those few changes we've made Island Paradise really pop off the pages. And that's that's good. We're going to say OK. Now I want you to notice on the Layers panel now I've got these effects. FX is for effects that are showing. I can actually use my eyeballs and turn that on and off. So now I want to, oh I really like it, I want it to apply to this Hawaii word too. So I could go to Hawaii and turn all those things on or I can copy an effect. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my effects. I'm going to hit Alt, hold and drag it down. So it's dragging that FX down to Hawaii. And notice how it drug all that stuff down for me automatically made it really easy. So instead of having to redo the work, make the software do the process for you. Let me hit a control S for control save. All right, so I, I want Hawaii to pop even more. I want to add a stroke to it. So I'm going to go to my Hawaii layer. I'm going to go to the bottom of my layers panel and hit this one that says FX, add a layer style. And I want to add a stroke this time. So right now it's picking up that stroke that we had from before, from around the picture. I want to go ahead and make it four pixels. I'm going to put it outside this time. Notice how it, make, how it changes between inside and outside. My blend mode is normal. My opacity is 100%. I want it to be completely solid. And you can pick any color you like. So maybe this time I'm going to choose the green from Island Paradise. So it's the same. So they kind of match. I'm going to say OK. And OK to apply the stroke. I can always go in. I don't like the green. Double click on stroke. Double click in there and choose a different color. So you always have the ability to go in after the fact and change what you have. That looks really awful. Now let's go to back of the green. All right, don't forget this is the advertisement that you're going to be using in your magazine. So you do want to do a pretty good job on this. If you don't like what you do, you can always go back and change it. That's just fine. All right, so now let's. What else can we do? Let's make our f flowers pop a little bit more by playing with some more layer styles. I'm going to go ahead and hit this one called flower, and let's go to layer, layer style, and add a drop shadow. Now that's a pretty harsh drop shadow. That's the one we added to the Island Paradise, but we don't want it to be quite as obvious. So we're going to turn opacity down to 60. Our distance is going to be 13, so we want it to be much wider this time. And our spread is going to be 9. So it got much, much lighter. We're going to go ahead and keep using our global light and our multiply. Now, while it's still open, we can add another style. So let's go ahead and add satin. Click on the word satin and you're going to get a whole other set of elements that you can customize. So right now it's doing black. Black's kind of ugly. So let's go ahead and choose another color and see how it makes it pop just a little bit more. Maybe that more fuchsia. Totally up to you as to how you're going to make that color come out even more. I'm going to make my opacity 20, so it's not quite as obvious. I'm going to change my, sp change my distance to about 22, so it's more doing just the center. Now watch, you can see what happens if you hit invert. You can kind of see the changes, how different it can look. So now we have kind of a sat nice satiny finish. And we're going to say OK. So now if I look under flower, I have a satin and a drop shadow. So what else can we do? Now, now our other flower looks lonely. Let's go down to our other flower and let's add an adjustment layer to that flower. So let's go ahead and go to adjust. We can close our character for now. Let's go to adjustments. Let's go to the second line. You want the first one. This is hue and saturation. We want to make sure we're on our flower layer because that's the one we want to adjust. We want to change. So if we hit hue, notice what happens when you do the sliders. It is adjusting everything that is underneath that layer. So it's hitting the pineapple, it's hitting the clouds. We're going to adjust it so it only 
plays with the flower, but I do want you to see what hue does. Saturation is how deep are those colors. If you take all saturation out, you get black and white. Let's go ahead and choose a hue of 43, a saturation of 19, and we're not going to play with the lightness at all. And we're going to say OK. So we like it, but we don't like the fact that it is affecting all the other colors, because now my pineapple looks really funky and green. So we're going to create what's called a clipping mask, which means only apply this layer, this effect to the layer below it. On the words hue and saturation, I'm going to right click, I'm going to get a pop-up menu that says create clipping mask. And notice now it's just my flower that has the effect, not everything else. So there are a lot of different ways to make sure that you get the effect that you want. Now, as you go, if you decide you want to change something, maybe on Island Paradise, we're going to grab our type tool, and we're going to say it's Island of Paradise. Notice how it automatically used those effects as we went along. I don't really like Island of Paradise. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. I'm going to select Island Paradise and hit my type tool and it's going to show me everything that I've got set up there. I'm going to decide I don't like 36, I want 32 instead. And because I had the layer selected, it automatically made that change. It's not like word processing where I had to go in and select all those individual items. I'm going to grab my move tool and I could use my arrows to kind of nudge it up and down to kind of center it a little bit better under the word Hawaii. 